Oh, hello. This is Mike Schwartz. I'm the founder and CEO of Glue. And today I want to talk to you about interoperable identity journeys with Agama and Janssen Auth Server. Now, as developers, we all love cloud identity. We love the convenience. But we also need to create custom identity journeys with our own branding, messaging, and language, and maybe implement some specific security features for our organization. So every identity platform gives you a way to customize, but a lot of these are proprietary and, and can lead to lock-in. And so in 2021, we decided we wanted to build some standard way to define these identity journeys. So we introduced the Agama programming language, which is a high-level interface to describe these flows, and also the Agama project archive, which is the standard way to, to store the assets um, for a given identity journey. So in this video, what I'd like to do is introduce to you how to create an Agama project, how to release an Agama project binary, and how to take that binary and deploy it and test it on an actual server. So I'd like to start with the creation part. We Glue hosts a free SaaS service called Agama Lab. You can find the link to it at agamalab.glue.org. We'll click on login. Note, we're going to log in with our GitHub identity, and that's also where Agama Lab stores files. So no files are stored on Agama Lab. Agama Lab asks us which repository we want to use to store our files. So note, I've already created in my personal directory a repository called Agama Demo, and we're going to specify that as the, our repository for Agama Lab. This is the, the home page for Agama Lab. For the purpose of saving time, I've already built a, a sample project um, called No Password or No PW. And by navigating into the project, you can see the three main um, folders that we use to store assets. So there's the a code folder where we save our actual Agama flows. There's the lib folder where we save our Java and Groovy scripts. And there's the web folder where we save our Apache free marker forms and other web assets like CSS, JavaScript, images, etc. Let's start by talking about the orchestrator, which is the most exciting part. This is the tool that allows us to whiteboard identity journeys. Now, while you don't have to learn a gamma, this tool sort of helps you write a gamma code. If you actually want to see the code that it's generating, you can hit the code button up here and it will actually show you the code. You can see that a gamma is a really concise language. Going back to the orchestrator, each of these blocks corresponds to an Agama command. Agama programs always start with a start block. And there's a very important piece of information here, which is the qualified name of, of this Agama flow. Being Java geeks, we use reverse Indian DNS names, but really you could use any unique identifier here for, for the qualified name. Now, the first interesting thing we do in this flow is we display a form. This is the file name of the form. Remember, these are Apache free marker forms. So what Agama Lab or what this Agama flow is doing is it's going to display this form and it's going to take the results of that form and put it into the creds variable. Now, the third block we're going to introduce is called the call block. And this allows you to call some code. Agama is low code, not no code. So we want to give you the ability to call code so you can do useful things. 
The way we do this is in the call block, you can specify the class that you want to call, the method, and you can send in parameters. In this case, we're sending in the username that we collected in the form. For the purposes of this demo, I wanted to show some branching functionality. So I created a method called isBob. This is returns true or false. If the username is Bob, it returns true, otherwise false. And the branching block in 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 Agama is called when, and so in this case we say when is Bob is true, then we can move to the next block when it's true when the condition is met. So when is Bob is true, we display another form called step two. This is also a, an Apache Free Marker form. And then we log it and we return an error. And if isBob is not met, then we go to the next block where we just log and return the username to signify a successful login. This is sort of a, a simple uh, flow. Um, actually, I've taught you almost all of Agama here. Maybe I'll make a quick mention of, of two more Agama blocks. Um, there's a block called Trigger which allows you to call another Agama flow in the server. And there's also a block called RFAC, redirect and fetch a callback, which is a block that allows you to send to the browser to an external identity provider, stuff happens and you get the response at a callback. This is a very common federated identity pattern and you can use it to support social login, SAML login or OpenID login, etc. So one of the nice things about having this flow is that it's read from left to right sequentially. Um, there, we felt at Glue that there were a lot of workflows that we could handle using this sequential diagramming. There are other ways that you could build a gamma programs. Maybe you could use a state machine or you could use a, a workflow engine but we, we chose this mechanism because we wanted the simplest way that we could satisfy the most people's like requirements and to just keep it really simple. So um, this is the first interface that we built for generating a gamma. Um, let me show a little bit more about the lib folder. Um, so I mentioned that we could call classes and we have some really easy classes here. Um, our first class is we wrote a simple Java um, program that basically takes the username that was entered and if it doesn't exist it adds it. You can see this very simple one-liner. We create the user entity and then we call the user Severus to add the user. Note that this Java um, class has access to the full context of, of the authentication. And for purposes of completeness this is a, a groovy script a very simple groovy script that checks if it's if the username is Bob, it returns true, otherwise false. And finally, um, let's show the the web authoring part. So we have a graphical editor to enable you to create these web forms. Agama Lab has a number of built-in um, templates that allow you to quickly get started, or, or you can drag and drop your own templates. And if you want to hand edit the HTML, there, you can do that too. Sometimes that's easier. I wanted to also show how you could display dynamic content. In this case, we're displaying the username as a variable to show you how we can do that. And Let's make, we're going to actually build a product, a project. And so let's actually change this text so we can see that this project actually got built. And we will save it. So now if we're happy with our project, what we can do is release it. So to do this, we right click and say release project. And we give it a version name. 
0.0.0.6. And what this does is it actually creates a zip file with the project archive. And so if I go to my repository in the releases section, what I'll see is that there's now a version 6 that's been released. And I can download the project archive file and also the checksum. Note, while I'm in this GitHub, I'll just quickly mention that the changes that you save in Agama Lab get saved in the ADS branch. If you're happy with those changes, then you can do a PR and go through your normal approval process for that. So now that I've I've authored a project, I've released it, I want to what I want to do is is test it. So I'll switch to my SSH session. So on my local MacBook, the, here's the two files I downloaded from GitHub. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to SCP those files to my server. And let's send the checksum also. Okay, so now if I go to my server, um, so this um, is a OpenSUSE Leap 15.3 server. It's a VM that I'm running on my System76, so I'm right here next to me. And so I've SC feed these files into my home directory. Here they are. The first thing I want to do is, is check to make sure that no one tampered with these. So I can do SHA-256, I can type SUM minus C, then you give the checksum file name. OK, those are OK. Good. So my file looks OK. And so now what I want to do is deploy it on my server. So to do this, I'm going to run what's called the TUI. Um, in Janssen auth server, we have several ways you can configure the server with the APIs, the command line. Um, this is called the TUI, the text user interface. It actually uses the device flow for authentication. So let me do this. I will click on this link. And I will approve the authorization request and go back. And now my program can obtain an access token. Um, by the way, if I wanted to log out of the TUI, then I could go here and log out, and that would clear the access token from my, um, from my system. It will expire after a while anyway. But my goal here is to deploy the Agama program that I just built. So, oh, I see actually I already have an Agama program with the same project with the same name. So let me delete this. I'll navigate to it, hit delete, and delete it. Okay. And now I will go and upload my project. It was in my home directory. OK, and while that's loading, what I'll do is I wanted to quickly introduce the our test client, because in order to test the server, we need some client to actually call the server. In the Janssen project, we have a really nice Flask demo RP. So it's in the demos folder. It's called Jan's Tent. And there's very easy instructions. Make sure you're running Python 3.1.1, and then you can just copy and paste these instructions to run it. It's very easy to run. In fact, I'll show you the configuration file. So I'm just running it locally on my, Mac on my uh, MacBook. But there's one file that you need to, um, to edit. It's called config.py. And there's three things you need to change. Um, the issuer, so you need to say what's the host name of the OpenID provider you're testing. Um, because we're testing the Agama script, we send the ACR values Agama. And then finally, in Jan's tent, we can send additional parameters in the authentication request. 
And so we set an additional parameter called agama underscore flow, and we give the qualified name of the script. This, this tells the auth server which, which flow we want to invoke. Now, I already started the server, so it's running. So I can go back to my browser. I'll start an incognito window here. I just want to make sure I'm logged out in this demo. And um, well, actually, before we do that, let's just go back and make sure that our um, new version actually got deployed. OK, it looks like it did. Um, I'll hit D, and I can see, OK, version 6. And here is the, is the flow that uh, got deployed, which is the one I was hoping for. That looks good. OK, so it looks like Agama, the Agama project is now deployed. So I can go ahead and, and test it. Um, to invoke Jan's tent, I use localhost 9090. And I will start. And it says, who are you? And um, how about Zorba? OK, that looks like it worked. Let's see if Zorba actually got added. Remember, the first part of our script was to add users, which happens a lot actually in social login, where a user gets registered on the social site, and then we dynamically add them in the IDP. So let's see if Zorba got added. There is Zorba, so that's good. Um, I don't think Zorba has a lot of information, but we didn't. That's all we sent it was username. Okay, so the good flow looks good. Let's actually test uh, the negative flow now and see what happens when we log in as Bob. So I'll start a new window. Go back to localhost 9090. Um, oops. Um, proceed. And who are you, Bob? Sorry, not you, Bob. We are the stuffs as Dreewams are made on. It looks like I, uh, I typoed Shakespeare, um, but that was our. That is what I text, <laughs> what I typed. So I guess it worked. Um, so that sort of concludes this this overview. Um, I, I hope that. You'll be engaged enough to to want to go and, and try it out. Again, the, the URL is agama lab, agama lab.glue.org. And please um, let, give us feedback and let us know if you're successful writing your own identity journeys. Thank you.